of Darwin's most persistent opponents, Max Muller, once famously declared, language is the Rubicon, which divides man from beast and no animal will ever cross it. So Muller thought that understanding the fundamental differences between non-human animal communication and human language would show once and for all that Darwin had to be wrong in thinking that we could have evolved from non-human animals. Well, this raises a question for followers of Darwin. If humans evolved from animals and no animal had language, how did humans get language? Well, it's a big question, of course, but it's one that I hope my research can help answer. Now, communication is not unique to humans. Bees dance to signal the location of nectar. Primates and various mammals have calls of warning, food. Birds have mating songs and so on. What's really unique to humans is a multi-layered system of communication called language, which humans use to convey a potential infinity of messages using rules to combine individual words that refer to things in the world in order to create larger units of meaning, like sentences. There's one popular theory that says basically that what's essential to linguistic communication is the speaker's specific intention to convey some meaning to a hearer, relying on the hearer's ability to decipher that meaning. Those who subscribe to this theory focus their inquiry on the question how our non-human ancestors could have possibly developed this sort of intention without language. And this is a feat that Darwin himself attributed to some unusually wise ape-like animal. Well, my argument is that this may be the wrong approach to take. If we look instead closely at the expressive behaviors of animals, by which I mean vocalizations, facial expressions, postures, and so on, which they regularly use in social interactions and activities, we may be able to identify characteristics suggesting that expressive signals may have been the precursors to language. So these expressive behaviors utilize shared vocal and other repertoires while also allowing for individual variation and contextual flexibility that depend on animals openly showing each other their states of mind. All of these are also characteristics of linguistic communication. My hope is that attending to these types of behavior may lead us to a new explanation of how language evolved, an explanation that does not rely on Darwin's unusually wise creature.